I know for some of us who've been in the ministry for a long time, this time of the pandemic has a lot of echoes for us of the AIDS crisis. Um, Rob and I were serving an inner city congregation in Oakland, California. We worked very closely with the homeless community and we lost a lot of friends um, and colleagues uh, in, in the struggle of, for justice um, during the AIDS crisis. And it was a time when some of our colleagues uh, were doing incredible ministry. Um, I'm thinking of our colleagues particularly in places that um, where uh, large gay populations. I'm thinking about uh, Kim Crawford Harvey and Bill Clark in Providence. And I remember um, Lynn Unger, another colleague, telling a story that Bill had shared with her. He had been a chaplain uh, to folks dying in the AIDS crisis. And one day he was just feeling like, all oh, it wasn't just a bad day, it wasn't just a bad week, it was a bad months and months of walking people through the valley of the shadow of death and being with them as they were dying. And his, he was went to the beach in Providence with a, a province town with a very heavy heart. And he was walking on the sand and looking out at the shore, knowing how committed he was to his ministry, but knowing how challenging it was. And just as he was walking on the beach, he heard this woman shouting and he was afraid she was in trouble. So he, he moved closer t to her and realized that she was shouting, Joy! 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 And she was shouting in the dunes and she was shouting in the water and she was shouting down the beach. And he, he looked at her and said, What a remarkable thing to be doing. So he started saying, Joy! 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 And he shouted to the seagulls, and he shouted to the ocean, and he shouted to the sand dunes, and he shouted to this complete stranger, Joy! Joy! He thought it was just so wonderful, and what he realized then is that you could, in the midst of tragedy and suffering, there could also be room for joy. And just at that point that he had this thought, this soggy golden retriever comes bounding up to the woman and of course what does she say but oh joy it's time to go home and so she gets joy on a leash and she and the dog joy go home and of course this is a wonderful story because it has a wonderful soggy golden retriever in it but it also speaks about the nature of joy and how Sometimes joy can't be called for, that sometimes joy can feel really far away from us, especially in times of such uncertainty. And, and yet, there are things that can sometimes bring joy closer. We can't call it to us necessarily, but sometimes just making a list of things that have brought you joy um, and trying to some of those things out. Um, so I wonder if you made a joy list, what brings you joy? What would be on your list? And are some of those things still possible even with the shelter at home? I just want to say that yesterday I was in a church meeting, but I was at home looking out my window and I saw some migrating birds. I f saw my first goldfinch of the season. I saw my first junco of the season. And it was a wonderful sight and brought me joy. So I'm making a joy list and certainly walking brings me joy. Certainly my crazy dogs bring me joy. Certainly my family brings me joy. My friends bring me joy. Good conversations. I get great joy from the working relationships we have here at Unity. And sometimes when joy feels elusive, the best thing we can do is actually get close to joy's relatives. And each of us have different images of what joy's relatives are, but it's pretty clear that people who have thought deeply about joy, people like Brene Brown, are very clear that embedded and if a cousin to joy is, of course, gratitude. So if you can't make a joy list right now, 
are there things that you're grateful for? And sometimes it's by getting close proximity to joy that we allow joy to come in on its own accord. And so I'm trying to cultivate joy and delight in the very ordinary things that I do each day. And when I can't do that, I always go back to my glad exercise and ground myself in gratitude and in the understanding that this too will pass. We will never be the same, but this too will pass. And we are growing and learning and practicing every day. Thank you.